this, whosoever soweth sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has deciding in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, but God loves a cheer for giving. And as I say all the time, if you not giving it from your heart, keep it in your purse. Because God is not gonna bless anything that you don't give him cheer for. And I just want all of us to remember, we're going out of 2021, and I'm praying in 2022 that we will all get on one accord Amen. and stay there. Yes, it's Lord. a lot of hurting going on in here. Amen. And I just think that now is the time for us to start praying to bring the new year in with hope, good cheers, and a lot of help from the Lord. Because Amen. he is the only somebody that can help us. Right. And I'm going to ask everyone to stand as Michael come down and he part the earth is alive.
nobody to talk to. You ain't got to call nobody in the flesh, but you can call on Jesus. And I found out because you never sleep in slumber. He always asks us to walk. Have I got a witness in here?
Gospels, we'll find out one thing, that you have four different accounts. You have an account from Matthew, you have an account from Mark, you have an account from Luke, and then you have an account from John. And when you pay this attention, you will find out that Matthew, Mark, and Luke, their account came from uh, what they heard or what they may have read or what they have perceived, whereas John, his account came from experience and walking with Jesus himself. But when we look at this gospel in Matthew, we find now that as Jesus is on his journey, his ministry journey, we find that now the disciples are coming and they're asking him a question. And they're asking him to show them or what are the signs of the times? What are the signs that the end is near? And it's amazing because as Jesus begins to share with them, he allows them to know this one mystery. He simply says, don't nobody know. He says, the angels in heaven don't know. He said, I, I, I'm the son, and I don't even know when I'm coming back. But it's only one person that knows, and that is God the Father. Hallelujah. He knows, and when he knows, and when he's ready, it's going to happen. In other words, he's saying, if I tell you, or if God told us when it's going to happen, mm -hmm. then there's going to be a whole lot of people that's going to wait until the last minute yeah, before they try to get it together Amen. so that they can make sure that they're in that number. Amen. Have I got a witness? Amen. But God is simply telling us, or the Bible instructs us to let us know that the way we live our lives right now is really rehearsal for how it should be when we get into heaven. Amen. Can I help somebody? You know Amen. What? There ain't going to be no raggediness in heaven. Mm. You can't get up into heaven any old kind of way. All right, all right. You can't have one foot in the club and one foot in the church trying Hallelujah. to get into heaven. You can't have your head in somebody else's house or in somebody else's bed. Yeah. You, you, you can't get into heaven oh. with a drink in your hand. You can't get Amen. into heaven with a, with a smoke in your mouth. You cannot <laughs> get into heaven with four letter words that don't say love, live, and Lord. Yeah. I wish I had a way. Yeah. He'll send you some signs to allow you to know that the warning comes before destruction. Yeah. And God will send you enough signs to let you know you better get it right because of some things that's about to shift. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when you see a man that's sitting there building an ark and pounding and there ain't been no signs and no floods or anything like this, it shouldn't have been an opportunity for you to talk down on that man, but it should have been a reason for you to get in the face of God and ask what's going on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. When the Bible tells us that our people, that the people, we, we, we suffer from a lack of knowledge, uh -huh. the reason why we suffer from a lack of knowledge is because some of us realizes that it takes time and sacrifice to obtain knowledge. Yes. Knowledge ain't something that you can just pick up off a grocery store rack mm -hmm. and get it for $3.73. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't take can't get a pound of knowledge if you want to and put it in a plastic bag and take it home and cook it. But yet knowledge is something that you've got to obtain by sacrificing some time to study and research and understand some things. And so when the Bible gets to letting us know that in all things get an understanding, it simply means that if I don't understand the dynamic of what's going on around me, I need to do some research to find out what is going on. Have I got a witness? I don't know nobody in here that ain't been on the Google to find out this stuff about COVID or to find out this stuff about what's this, uh, a Mariano, what, what, what's it called? Huh? Oh, Omicron. I think I heard somebody on the news say a Mariano and Beyonce or something today. So I don't know. Y'all know what I'm talking about, that other thing. Amen. 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 And, but, but we did some research to find out simply because we don't want to be caught in the blind getting something and don't know how we got it because we don't understand the dynamic of it. So if we know what it does, if we know how it spread, if we know where it's at, now we got some knowledge on trying to prevent ourselves from having it. Amen. But if we just, like some of these folks here with no mask. Hallelujah. Amen. And breathing and coughing and sneezing on that. Amen. 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 That did research and still don't care. Are you listening? Amen. But the people in Noah's days did not heed any signs that was going on. And the Bible says that, 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 that he kept Noah encouraged because there was, a, there was something that had to happen. And Noah was in position for God to be able to accomplish what he set out. 
-hmm. Have I got a witness? Amen. But yet there was nobody that paid attention to the signs. Yes. And when it speaks of it here, it says that when he sent Noah in the ark mm -hmm. with his wife and his family mm -hmm. and two of each kind, and he closed the door. The same people that was sitting around and not heeding the signs Amen. now got caught up Hallelujah. in the flood. Yes. Hallelujah. Not ready for what Jesus had, had what God had in store. Are you listening? They, they, they died unprepared. Amen. Are you listening? Yes. They, they missed an opportunity to do what? Make it into heaven. Why? Because they were so much concerned with what their own self is that they wasn't paying attention to the All signs right. that were sit before yes. them. And so now, as, as, as Matthew begins to share this with us, he's sharing this with us, and he's saying, he said, it's going to be just like the day of Noah. Amen. Folks didn't heed the signs, and so when the, when, when the flood came, it caught them all by surprise. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And so now, he begins to go on, and, and I want you to catch this, because when we get so, so, so consumed with our own way of living. Amen. We get so consumed with the things that make us feel good. Amen. We get so consumed in trying to live our best life. You know what I'm saying? Then we don't pay attention to the life Amen. that we should be living, the sacrifice that we should be making, the prayers that we should be praying, the watch that we should be watching. I wish I had somebody Amen. in here. Because we get so consumed in things other than who God is. Amen. And so now we find here that the writer Matthew begins to go on and he says that they did not know until the flood came and was swept them all away. This is the way that the Son of Man is coming. He's coming the same way. Listen, <clears throat> the disciples were trying, they walked with Jesus, but now they're trying to figure out when he's coming back. And my question is, why are you trying to figure out when he's coming back? Mm -hmm. Just keep walking with Jesus yeah. and doing what he does. Yeah. So when he comes back, he won't get you by surprise. Because you're in the right place at the right time to do the right thing. But when I get down to verse number 40, which is my, my, my verse of focus for today, it simply says that then two men will be left in the field. Or two men will be uh, in the field and one will be taken away and one will be left. And two, two women will be grinding grain with a hand mill and one will be taken and one will be left. And then when we look at this and you begin to research this, research, there we go again, research, find it out. Yes, sir. When you research this, you'll find out that there are different theologians that have different understandings about this one being left and one being taken. Mm -hmm. There are some theologians that says the one that was left, the one that was taken away, is the one that, 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 that stands before judgment. Right. That's the one that is not ready. And then you have other theologians that say the ones that are taken away are the ones that are caught up so much uh, uh, in the rapture, should I say. Mm. Not necessarily the rapture, but like caught up. In other words, it, being separated, they were ready, and the one that was left wasn't. No matter how you cut it up, no matter how you slice it, one of them was ready and the other one wasn't. Mm. All right. The question is, which one are you going to be? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is this. We don't know when he's coming back, Hallelujah. but yet we also know that when he comes back, the Bible says that we ought to be ready at all times. Mm -hmm. Being ready at all times means that we've got to make sure that we are doing the things that pleases God. Amen. we got to do the things that make sure that we're not disappointing God. Yeah. we got to do the things that make sure that we're lifting up and edifying each other. Yeah. we got to do the things that make sure that we're spreading love. We gotta do what the Bible says. We gotta make sure that we're looking out for the widows and the orphans. We gotta make sure that we're feeding the homeless. We gotta make sure that we're doing the things we're supposed to do, not forsaking the fellowship of the brethren. We're supposed to go make sure we're visiting the sick. We're supposed to go make sure that we're checking on those that are even incarcerated. Our job is to do what? Make sure that we spread the good news about Jesus. Make sure we spread the love of Jesus. Our job is to do what? Make sure that we build each other up and not tear each other down. Our job is to do what? Our job is to love and forgive beyond our own self. Our job is to make sure that everything we do, God is pleased with. Because we don't know when he's coming back. But when he comes, we want to be the one caught up with him and not the one left behind. Have I got a witness? And I need somebody to know and understand here. You can't keep on faking the funk all your life. Uh, you got to stop faking after a while and be intentional about what you're trying to do. Yes. I wish I had a witness yes. in here. Stop carrying a Bible that you don't read. Amen. Amen. Stop quoting scripture that you don't believe. Yes. Stop singing songs that you don't understand what they mean. Yes. 
Have I got a witness? Yes. Stop running around telling people about how good God is and you don't know how good he is for yourself. Yeah. Stop looking down your nose at somebody else because they ain't what you think they ought to be. But the Bible tells us that we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves, And that simply means this. You can have everything more than me. I'm supposed to love you. You can look raggier than me, but I'm supposed to love you. You may stink and your breath stink and your, and, and, and your hair is funny, but my job is to love you and not judge you. Simply because God is coming back. And he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. And we've got to stop believing that the building is the church and start realizing that we are the church. And the more spots and wrinkles you have, the less opportunity you have to make it to heaven. That's right. Amen. Oh, I wish I had some. Right? Yes. Got a little saying that I say, if we learn how to shout out the spots yes. and praise out the wrinkles. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. Somebody go catch the other one. If you just shout out the spots, what do you mean? You don't have to have a reason to shout how good God is. You want to be able to shout just because he woke you up this morning. You should be able to shout just because you got a roof over your head. You should be able to shout just because you still got blood running through your veins. All right, all right. And it's a shame that we got to have a reason to shout. And if other folk ain't shouting, then our reason for shouting ain't good enough. But I come by to tell you that the person next to you can't get you into heaven. And if that person leaves and you still here, maybe it's because they didn't have a problem shouting. Oh, I wish I had somebody here. But he says there's going to be a man in the field. And there's going to be two of them. One of them's going to leave. It's going to be women that's going to be grinding at the meal. One of them's going to leave. That means one of them had their mind set. Yes. Yes. That I'm going to live for Jesus. Yes. That I'm going to trust in the Lord yes. until I die. Amen. Huh? Yes. One of them's going to sit back and say, no matter what I don't have, I'm going to bless the Lord for what I do have. Yes. I wish I had a witness. Yes. I may not have as much as the next man, but I sure got more than I deserve. Yes. Come on here, somebody. I may not drive a Bentley, but I come by to tell you that my Pinto show will get me from A to B real good. My oil chain only cost me $37, but in that Bentley, I got to leave it because I can't afford the oil chain. But if I'm grateful over the things that God gave me and keep my mind lined up to where God, if you never ever bless me another day of my life, you've already done more than enough. When he comes back, he will see that I am lined up with his will. And I can be the one taking. I don't know about you, but my desire is to make sure that I hear him say, well done. Yes, yes. Amen. And how do I get him to say well done? Amen. But the Bible also shares with us that we can't serve two masters. Amen. Amen. He says you're going to love one and hate the other. Hallelujah. And if I'm going to be ready, I got to know which one I'm loving. Yes. All right. All right. Uh, I got to make sure that I understand that I'm loving somebody that loves me beyond me. All right. All right. And if I can love on him a fraction of how much he loves on me, yes. then that means that me loving on him means that I got to love on you. Yes. Yes. Me loving on him yes. means that I'm not going to be, 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 be what they call, uh, I'm not going to be segregated when I come down to my love. All right. Amen, somebody. I'm going to love you when you look like me and when you don't. I'm going to love you when you talk like me and when you don't. I'm going to love you when you smell like me and when you don't. I'm going to love you when you eat with me and when you don't. I'm going to love you when you talk about me. I'm going to love you. Come on here. I'm going to love you when you hate on me. I'm going to love you in spite of simply because when I look at the work God has done for me, then I understand that he's done far more than me than anything that you can ever do to me. And my job is to love you because he says for me to pray for those that spitefully use me. So use me if you want to. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm crazy what you want me. I'm going to keep on loving. It really doesn't matter because my job ain't to please you, but my job is to please God. My long-lasting desire is not to have you as my friend as much as it is for me to get into heaven. So at the end of the day, watch this. Yes. <laughs> if my main desire is to please God. Yes. If my main desire is to make sure that when he looks down here, 
and begins to say, because see, listen, when the Bible talks about the rapture, yes, and when the Bible talks about the tribulation, mm -hmm. this should be something that makes a Christian want to make sure that he's watching all the time. Yes. Right? Because when he says first in the rapture, he says first the dead in Christ will rise. Mm. That means those that died already. Uh -huh. That means that those have been buried already, but they were saved believers. Mm -hmm. And then he says, and then those that are left will be caught up in the air. Yes, right? yes. But then there's going to be some folk that's not going to be caught up because yes. they can't yes. yes. up. They got too much sin on them to move up. They, they didn't want to sit back and believe that God is who he says he is. Yeah. And so now the Bible says that there's going to be a thing called a time of tribulation. Yeah. And in the time of tribulation, the Bible declares that there's going to be a time of suffering. There's yeah. going to be a time where it says it's going to be a gnashing of teeth. And flesh is going to be falling off of people's eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Because this needs to let you know that if you're not caught up, then you're going to suffer. You're going to suffer. And the Bible does declare to us that this is going to be a pain that you have never ever experienced in your life that there are going to be people that's going to be begging for God to come back and relieve them of the pain where there's still going to be people that's not going to believe that God is who he says he is I suffer some stuff that you don't have to suffer by just making the right decisions, the right decisions and the right choices. We suffer because we put ourselves through suffering. All we've got to do is line ourselves up with what the Word says. And if you don't know what the Word says, then that means you're not reading the Word. Because the Bible is plain as day. And all we have to do is get in there and find out what the Word is saying about how we should live. We should not be cussing each other out. We're supposed to love each other. We're not supposed to do these things that make God sit back and wonder why he created us. I need you to know, watch this. When the Bible says that when God had created, when he destroyed the earth, it was he was so disappointed with the earth, he sat back and says, I'm feeling regretful that I even created you in the first place. But then he gives us another chance. And I want you to understand that this chance that he's given us it's going to be our final chance. Yes. We ain't going to have a chance to do no do-over this time. Yes. And what I need you to know, if you want to be the one that's caught up in the air with him yes. at the great day of the rapture, yes. you need to make sure that if your mind ain't staying on Jesus as of today, you need to switch your stinking thinking. Yes. You need to get to the place to where you sit back and you say, I'm going to make Jesus my choice. Yes. You need to be at the place and you want to say, God, if I ain't been loving right, I need you to create in me a clean heart and renew me a right spirit. God, if I'm walking around in the spirit of unforgiveness, I need you to shake all of that unforgiveness up out of me because I need to forgive not for them, but I need to forgive for me. I need you to know that we've got to lighten up the load so when the rapture comes, we'll be light enough to fly on up into the sky with the Lord. And the only way that you're going to do that is when you can make up your mind that there may be things that I don't understand, but if I don't understand them, I'm going to get in the word and I'm going to listen. This is the reason why God put people in your life yes. that have a little bit more wisdom than you do. Yes. And that's yes. the reason why you ought to pick up the telephone and call and say, I don't understand this scripture. Can yes. you help me yes. with it? Yes. I don't understand what it meant by this. Can you help me with that? Yes. I'm yes. having some problems with the way I love my brother. Can you help me with yes. that? But when we walk around with too much pride and can't admit the things that we need help with, now we're making ourselves too heavy to be able to be caught up in the rapture. Yes. But I want that you understand something. Uh, I don't need nobody helping me to get to hell. So it doesn't matter what you say and you do to me. If I respond the wrong way, then I'm taking away the, the word that says that God says that he'll make your enemies your footstool. I'm taking away when he says vengeance belongs to me. And if God says that he'll fix it, all I've got to do is give it to him. Then I've got to believe that my life has got to be exactly what the word says. And yeah, once in a while. I got this little saying that I say. I say, I come fresh, straight from a city, the, a city called Fresh Off a Deep Rose Behind. Right. And you making me homesick and I got a one-way ticket. Right. I wish I had somebody. And every so once in a while, people want you to cash the ticket in. Yeah. But I found out that the airport that I got to get in, the Lord said that that airport is no longer in existence. Yeah. And I'm glad that Jesus is the owner of the airport. Yeah. Because if it's the devil's airport, I'd be on the airport every time you turn around. But thank God for Jesus. And thank God that I got enough love for Jesus.
can say, God, in spite of all that I'm going on on this earth, I still trust and believe that I got a place in heaven. For you said in your word, in the book of John, you said, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, you may be also. And if I ain't got nothing else to hold on to, I can hold on to the fact that I got a place better over there than I got over here. And so my main goal is to get over there where it's all better. Where the Bible says every day will be Sunday. And the Sabbath will have no end. Where it tells me that all the promises of God are yes and amen. Where it tells me that if there's no more sickness, or where it tells me that there's no more doctor's appointments. Where it tells me I don't have to pay no more bills. Where it tells me I don't have to be hungry. Where it tells me I wish I had somebody up in here. And I'm going to get to that place. I need to line myself up in this place. What am I trying to say to somebody if I've offended anybody in this house? Since I've been here, I want to let you know that I'm sorry and that I love you and it ain't nothing you can do about it. My intentions is not to offend you, but my intentions is to be a part of you and make you a part of me. So together, my, my, the songwriter says, I need you and you need me to survive. It is God's will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Yeah. And since I need you to survive, I need you to be caught up with me. Yeah. And if you're going to be caught up with me, then that means we got to do this thing right. we got to love each other. we got to encourage each other. we got to bless each other. We've got to help each other. And i got a witness here. we got to talk to the people in the streets and tell the folks about a dying Savior who rose again for our salvation. we got to tell folks that he is the way, the truth, and the light. When I come by to tell you, stop worrying about when he coming and start worrying about what you're doing when he do come. If I got a witness here, I tell people all the time, when he come back, I would that he catch me preaching in the pulpit or giving somebody that needs some food, some food. Helping somebody that's naked with some clothes. Visiting somebody in the hospital. Encouraging somebody in the midst of their discouragement. I, when he comes back, I want him to catch me working. Working for the Lord. So when he says, now I'm going to give you a permanent vacation. Right up here in the land called Milk and Honey. And I found out that heaven is better than Putacana. Heaven is better than the Puerto Rico. Rico. Heaven is better than, 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 than all of them other tropical vacations. Because them vacations I got to come back from. But when I get into heaven, that is going to be my final destination. Have I got a witness of somebody that want to get to heaven? But I challenge you to live right. Not tomorrow, but today. Not next week, but right now. I challenge you to get in the word. I challenge you to live the word. I challenge you to share the word. I challenge you to love like the word. I challenge you to give like the word. Have I got a witness in here? And when it's all said and done, if you're doing what God says do, you don't have to worry about the sign. But when you see a sign that you really don't understand, just ask God to give you the understanding so it doesn't take away from your work. Have I got a witness? Because the more you worry about what you don't know, you spend less time doing the things that you should do and the things that you do know. But if you give, you give God your word. For the Bible says that how many hairs or how many days will you get more for your worry? Because the now that the word tells Tells us that every day that we have coming, God has already got it planned out. Your job is just to rise up and get in it. The song says, rise, shine, give God the glory. And if you can give God the glory, you can understand your story. Because he's got your story written out. And if we stop trying to deviate because we want to be something that we're not, we'll be better off with this story. Because when my book closed, I want folks to know that it's a bestseller. Yeah. He wasn't always what God called him to be. But before God called him from here, he showed up had it all together. Have I got a witness? Air high five somebody next to you and say, I don't know about you, but I don't want to be the one that's left behind. I want Jesus by all means necessary. And as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord with gladness, with happiness, and with love. Have I got a witness? Have I got a witness? Have I got a witness? So now we're going into this thing called Christmas, and I'm done. 
We're going into this thing called Christmas. And I want you to know that Christmas is not about the gift that you go buy. It's not about how much you spent on somebody. But I would that you keep your dineros in your pocket and share with them about a man that came to save the world. Share with them about a man that can turn your situation around. Share with them about a man that still heals the sick and gives sight to the blind. Share with them about a man that was born in the manger, wrapped in swapping clothes. Share with them about the man that the three wild, that the wise men came, led by a shining star. Share with them about the man that yes, that the, that the king tried to kill him, but he couldn't because God was still surrounded and had him surrounded. Tell him about the man that sat in the temple as a young man and while the priest and the prophets tell him about the man that lived for 32 years living his life as a carpenter but yet ministering the gospel. Tell him about the man that loved us so much that he left from the infinity to come down to humanity and he took on the world and he put it on his shoulder and he took sin and had it nailed with him on the cross tell him about that man that took the sting of death down into the grave and then he left it there for three long days tell him about the man that when he got up he got up with all The one that God so loved that he gave him to us that whosoever will believe shall not perish but have everlasting life. Can I tell somebody something? Get your mind right because God says you won't perish but you'll have everlasting life. What am I trying to say? Which one will you be? Will you be left behind or will you be rose up into the sky? And for me, I'm trying to rise just like Jesus did. I'm trying to ascend just like Jesus did. I'm trying to sit. I don't got to be at the right hand. I just want to be in his presence. Have I got a witness? And all it takes is for me to make sure I repent and turn. Make sure that I love. Make sure that I give. And make sure that I live. Have I got it's been good, y'all, but I got to get ready to take my seat. But before I go, let me ask somebody something. Which one will you be? Tap yourself and say, I want to rise. I want to rise. I want to rise. I think I shared with y'all before how the enemy will send somebody to try to get you out of character. Yes. Yes. But the moment that you recognize that you are out of character mm. and you go back and you right your wrong huh. in the same platform that you made it wrong. Mm. See, that's where we get it wrong at. We're going to mess with somebody in public, but then we want to go and make it right in private. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. But see, I need you to know that the person that you're making it right to ain't necessarily the person that needs to see the right in you. Yeah. But somebody else that knew who you are, what you stand for, yes. and heard that, and now they have a different perception of yes. who you are. So yes. when you go back and make it right, you know what happens. Now they have to sit back and say, well, maybe he is what he said he is. Yeah. Yeah. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Yeah. And so in that, I, I was sharing with you how, about how somebody was literally trying to pull me out of character. Well, matter of fact, he didn't try. He, he, he succeeded. <laughs> He succeeded. Mm. <laughs> he yeah, succeeded. True. But when you got enough Jesus in you, yeah, it don't hit you and stay there. Yeah. But rather it convicts you right on the spot. Amen. Right. Amen. And on three separate occasions, I've made it right to him. And then now it's actually got spilled over into some other folk that don't even know what's going on. Amen. So I made it right to him in front of them too. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In all of that, 
the devil is still busy because oh, yeah. nothing that was said mm. was good enough. Amen. <laughs> so now what happens is when he says he'll make your enemies your footstool, yeah. right. now what happens is everybody that would question what's going on now see who the villain really is. Yes, yes. Because somebody sent me a message that says, that's big of you to apologize to somebody that won't even say nothing back. And I told mm -hmm. them, I said, when you're sincere about your apology, you don't need a response. That's right. Amen. Because right. right. according to my Bible, my Bible says when you make it right and they want to sit up a trip, yeah. he said, I can shake the dust off my That's feet. right. Keep it pushing. Because at this point, I got it all for me. All yeah. right. All right. I got a witness. Yeah. What am I trying to say? If we really want to make sure that we inherit the kingdom of God, mm. We've got to make sure we understand where we're wrong and make it right. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. In the same platform that we messed it up, we need to make sure it got fixed up. That's right. Amen. That's right. Not doing it for attention. Not doing it to please nobody. Right. But doing it because this is the order right of thing to do. Have I got a witness? Amen. Amen. And at the end of the day, guess what happens? Mm. People stop looking at who you are mm -hmm. and start recognizing whose you are. Yes. 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 I forgot to yeah. When they hear you speak, they don't hear you, but they hear how God is leading you to speak. Right. And every once in a while, God has got to shake some stuff up That's so right. that he can yes, make he sure does. that his yes, voice he is heard through somebody yes. Yes. who the enemy has been trying to attack around everybody. Yes, yes. Pastor West, this has been a rough year for everybody. Mm. And Satan has sent out an all-out attack with every piece of arsenal that he can find. Yes, Lord. I heard a young man say this. He said, they have this little rap thing that they do, they're gospel rappers, and they have this thing that is called the road to demask us. Not the road to Damascus. To demask us. Yes. And he said, I want to share with you the revelation God gave me. He said, David said, I will bless the Lord mm. at all times. Yes. If you understand that the power of praise that comes from us is enough to shake the camp of the enemy. Amen. So if the enemy can stifle your praise, then he can hinder your power revelation that you got. And I shared with him this. But there's no mask in the world that can smother this. See, because when God knows the content of your heart, <clears throat> and, and if your lungs is to where you can't breathe, you can't get a praise out. The old songwriter says, if I never sing another song, mm. if I never say another word, Amen. I just wave my hands. Yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Because when I wave my hands, what mm. I'm doing is this is a sign of surrenderance to God. Amen. Amen. Not only that is, how many of us got babies and grandkids or something mm. here that's little, little? Amen. When they want you to pick them up, what do they do? Amen. 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 And that's a sign of saying, I'm surrendering who I am to the authority of yes. who you are. Amen. So if I can't say nothing else, I can moan, I can wave my hands. Yeah. Yeah. So the enemy can't take away my prayer. That's right. Yes. But he can make every attempt that he can. Amen. And saying all that, I'm saying this. Stop using excuses as to why we can't give God our best. All right, Amen. all right. Because when it comes down to the part where he starts taking stuff from us, mm -hmm. then we're going to be fussing and complaining to that's him. That's right, about that's right, mm -hmm. that's right. So true. And I like the scripture when it says, If my people mm -hmm. who are called by my name yes. will humble themselves. Yes. Seek my face. Yes, Lord. Pray. Yes. Turn from your wicked ways. Wicked ways. He says, "Then I'll hear from him and heal the land." Yes, yes, Lord. Are you listening? Yes. In the scripture, it goes on. Just say, "No man knows the day nor the hour." That's oh. right. That's right. And if we don't know when it's coming. Hmm. It can come tomorrow. That's right. So stop waiting until next week before you get it right. All right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. And if we go all through Matthew and we share with the other Gospels, you'll find Jesus speaking in parables. You'll find what the disciples are asking. But what I like about the disciples was this. They didn't know, so they thought they'd ask. Mm -hmm. 
Because my mother always told me that the dumbest question is one that's never been asked. That's right. Amen. Yeah. There's no dumb questions in Jesus. Mm. Because every question you have in Jesus, there's going to be an answer. All right. You may not like it. Mm. But there's going to be an answer. Amen. Yes, Lord. With that being said, I just want to know. And don't raise your hands, because I don't want nobody to know you, that you are willing. Amen. If you're somebody that said in my in your heart today that you're going to reevaluate your stance, where you've been, what you've been doing, so that you can make sure that you realign it to what God wants you to do. Because you don't want to be the one left behind. Have you ever seen the movie called Left Behind? Yes. If you've never seen the movie called Left Behind, that's a movie that you ought to watch. It should be on Netflix. Kirk Cameron, I believe, is the one that produced that. And it's just a simple movie that's speaking of. And, and, and he did not deviate a lot from that based off of scripture. There are going to be people, he shows you that there was a church full of folk that was crying, falling all out mm. in the whole nine yards. Mm. Because the rapture came and they were still here. Mm. Goes to show you, don't let the church house fool you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And don't let the church folk mm. hood make a bamboozle you. Because yeah. there's folks that's dressed up, fixed up, yeah. in church, shouting, running through the church, speaking something that ain't tongue, but they speaking yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. That's on their way straight to hell. Yeah. Your job ain't to be concerned about what they is and what they not doing. Amen. Your job ain't to be concerned about what you right. is and what you ain't doing. That's right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Let's make it up in our mind right now. If you want to see that movie, see that movie. It's called. <coughs> what did I say it was called? That's yeah. behind. Huh? Yeah. That's what it was. Left behind. That's what yeah. I said. Yes. It's a movie called Left Behind. Yeah. It's a biblical movie. And it's something that will really, 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 really cause you to reevaluate your life. Because when you think that you're saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost, but you're comfortable to live in the way you want to live, reevaluate what being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy yes. Ghost is. Amen. Amen. Says the Yvonne. Yes. We have problems, we have troubles. Every day. And according to the word, we all sin and fall short of his glory. That's right, every day. But the point is, he tells us that we can repent and turn. That's right, yeah, yeah. He says that he forgives us. Our problem is we got to learn how to forgive ourselves. That's right. So don't believe that being a Christian means that you got a perfect life. Right. That nothing ever happens to you. Amen. But rather being a Christian means Amen. that you have more challenges in your life. Yes. Because the enemy is trying to keep you from getting to where God promised you yeah, you could go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In that and with that, reevaluate your life. Yes, Lord. You got about two weeks left in 2021. My desire is that you don't wait until 2022 to make change. Amen, amen. But my desire is that before 2022 today, you make change. Amen. 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 Because if you're already running before 222, before for 2022 get here, you ain't got to start running in 222 to 2022. If you're already running, just keep up the momentum. Amen. If you're already serving, keep serving. Amen. If you're already praying, keep praying. If you're already Amen. praying, keep praying. If you're already working, keep working. Amen. No, no New Year's resolutions this year because New Year's resolutions always are the things that get messed up after the first week. Amen. How about if you do this this year? How about if you pray and ask God what it is that he wants you to make covenant with him about? Because if you make a covenant with God about something for 2022, remember covenants are not like contracts. Contracts can be broken. Contracts can be messed up because of a breach. But according to the word, a covenant cannot be broken mm. by 
by anything other than death. Yes, and so if you tell God, I want to make a covenant with you, you're simply saying, Lord, I'm so serious about this yes. that I'm willing to say that I'll die yes. if I don't keep my end up. Yes. Does that mean it's going to be perfect for you? No. That doesn't no. mean that you've got to increase your prayer life so that you can maintain what your covenant is. Yes. Yes. When God makes covenant with you, he doesn't break it. So we ought to start making covenant with God. That's right. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Share with him, God, I want to enter into a covenant with you. That in this year of 2022, this is what I am committing myself to do. Yeah. Don't try to add 27 things on your plate. Because 26 of them ain't going to get finished. All right. Make a covenant with God for one thing and focus on being the best at that that you can yeah. be. Yeah. He'll take care of the rest of the <clears throat> With all heads bowed, all eyes closed. This is a time of service where if somebody, if they don't know Jesus or the part of their sin, they want to rededicate their life. This is a time where you can do that. If that's you, just simply raise your hand and say, I want to rededicate my life. I want to give God my life for the first time. And then this is also a call for someone that may want to join the church, say I'm looking for a church home. I'd love to come to help me all over here. If that's you, just raise your hands. I want to be a part of see the growth. Amen. See, I'm suffering the wrong. Together, no man can put a son up. But we ask God right now that they be a couple 
Father, that are set forth to do some dynamic things in ministry. Create the ministry that you would have for them. Create him to be the husband, Father God, that she needs and her to be the wife that he needs. But even more so, God, create them to be the partners that they need. Give them understanding and great communication. But more so, God, let them continue to hang on to the third chord, which is you. Mm, <laughs> and we thank you in advance for what you're about to do. Thank you, Lord. Then I lift up the family of Cedar Grove right now, God. That not only, Father God, do you allow your spirit to continue to rest, rule, and abide here, but Lord, that you begin to do some things in 2022, God, that, that, the, that the members here have been longing for. Father, we ask that you increase your power in here, that you increase your anointing, God, that you increase your direction, God. We ask you, oh God, that you put us on one accord, that we can begin to work together for the church in the book of Acts. God tells us that when we all came together on one accord, did the things that you called them to do, they began, you began to add to the church daily. And we trust and believe, God, that you'll do just that. So we thank you, God. We honor you. We praise and magnify your holy name. I lift up Sister Katie to you now, God, that you continue to bless her. Yes, Lord. To play under the unction of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I thank you, O oh God, that she's a willing vessel, willing to be used by you. Yeah. Continue to open up doors that no man can shut. Yes, I thank you for Pastor West, Father God, for his heart. To serve you and to serve the community. Yes, Lord. Enlarge his territory. Increase his capacity to do bigger and better. Yes. I thank you for Papa, Father God, who stands firm and continues to pray and continues to be the watchman on the wall. Yes. I thank you, O oh God. Yes, Lord. I give your name praise. Yes. Bless Cornerstone. Yes, Lord. Bless every musician in this house. Yes, Lord. Then I ask a special blessing for my life. Yes. My good thing, who you blessed me with. Yes, Lord. Continue to lead her and guide her and bless her. Yes. To be all you would have her to be. Yes. And we just thank you. Thank you. Then I say a super special prayer for the birthday girl. All right, all right. Mother Maddie, Father God, yes, that when she Lord. wakes up on the 21st, yes, Lord. that you fill her with such an awesome yes, feeling Lord. of rejoicing and happiness. Yes, Lord. For the simple fact that you love her that much. Yes, Lord. That she, she understands, Father God, that if it had not been for you on her side, she don't know where she would be. Yes, Lord. Bless her to know, Father God, that in those 84 years, God, you've given her something that nobody will ever be able to take away from her. It's wisdom and knowledge. Yes, yes. Let her continue to love with the love of God. Yes, Lord. Let her know, God, that you still got an awesome work for her to complete. Yes, Lord. And we thank you for it now. Thank you. We give your name all the honor, yes. all the praise, yes. and all the glory. Yes. In the matchless and divine name of Jesus Christ, that we pray. All of God's children say, Amen. 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 Amen.